Defining trait of Ka Larry is the uh, the endless optimism. <laughs> like <laughs> you can kick him down as many times you want, but yes. he, there's only one place in the games that I think he's like really broken down. Um, Where's that? Um, we'll go to Larry three. There's a point <laughs> point at the game. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. But about um, Larry one was um, it was uh, the plot was pretty simple. And after that, a year later, out came Larry 2. Can you tell some stories about making the game? Um, I got a lot of feedback on Larry 1 because it, it, it was so big, it wouldn't fit on one floppy. And you had to have two floppies. <laughs> well, that turned out to be a real pain in the ass because uh, of the way the game was constructed, you would get in the taxi and ride to a different location and you had to put in into uh, yeah. you had to change the floppy disks. Disk. <laughs> so you were constantly inserting and un, you know removing and installing uh, floppy disks. So I decided with Larry 2 that I would solve that problem by uh, making no area uh, in the game larger than a floppy disk and that you would complete one area and then move on to the next area. And, and nowadays that would be called a level, you know, <laughs> but, but well, I didn't know that and, and nobody I knew talked like that. Uh, but anyway, we, so what I did was I thought of it as um, beads on a string, that there were these series of non-connected uh, areas. Um, and so uh, I, think it, I think it took six discs, is that true? Might be yeah, the low density. I think it was six. Yeah. It was six discs um, for the game, and uh, uh, these were <laughs> these were three hundred and sixty k floppies. <laughs> so I mean, you know, all, all of this would now fit on one little, little tiny disc. But, yeah, but well, back then it, it was a six disc game. But you didn't have to swap discs when you finished one disc. You put in the next disc, and and you were golden. So that was uh, one goal was to uh, uh, make levels and make each area self-contained. Um, and another goal was I thought that um, uh, Larry, after uh, finding his uh, true love in Lost Wages, uh, would um, uh, be disappointed with a one-night stand and go looking for love. And so uh, I, I want to I want to have him find his true love, and that became the goal. Well, that wasn't a good idea because what I found out what guys really wanted was to get laid, and <laughs> so uh, not too many were looking for true love, but a lot of people were looking for loose women. So uh, anyway, that, I think that's why the game was the least successful of all the Larry games. <laughs> yeah, Larry, Larry but, too. Uh, I, was I was very pleased, pleased with the. Uh, uh, challenge given you by the chief of the tribe when you discover your your woman at the end uh, you have to prove your manhood uh, by writing a, um, uh, a a program in assembly language <laughs> <laughs> quite a challenge yes like well that's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's what, what Ken, Ken Williams, Ken Williams. Yeah, yeah. When I uh, uh, had written my early games in BASIC, he said, well, real men don't program in BASIC. You've got to rewrite these games in assembly language. And I said, why? They run fine the way they are. Yeah, but real men write in assembler. <laughs> so I rewrote, I learned assembly language and rewrote uh, my engine and my games and stuff in assembly. <laughs> so when it came time to win uh, the love of Kalalao, uh, you had to uh, write a assembly language program. <laughs> yeah, Larry 2 is actually, it's my favorite of all Larry games. It's oh, a, well, it's, thank you. Yeah, it's I, a bit, bit of odd one out because in, in Larry 2, it's like the contrast between all the other games, like sex equals death in Larry 2. Like, uh -huh. there's, there isn't one sex scene 
where Larry isn't like cut in half and put into acid. <laughs> was was it from was there some pressure or pushback from Sierra to make it less like sexual no, content? <laughs> no, no, no. It was it was uh, it was me trying to not do the same thing again. That that was I, I mean I tried to take what I did in Larry One and not do the opposite, but to do different handle handle it differently. Yeah, it's uh, the plot is it's kind of like a feels almost like a James Bond spoof, like <laughs> like lots of well, references. There was some of that in there, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So um, my wife, my wife actually bought an unklunk. At, <laughs> unklunk. At, yeah, the, uh, that was instrument. Like, or oh, is it was like one of the? It, it's a real instrument. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, you can you can Google it, but uh, but it's such a funny word, you know. I just had to use it in the game somehow. And so. Okay. So I'm uh, moving on from Larry two. Then there was one year later, Larry three. What can you tell us about making of Larry 3? What was your life back then? Did you actually, I have one question, did you have an office at Sierra or did you work from home or home office or something? Uh, I think Larry 3 was the... Um, I think I had an assistant. I think uh, uh, Carlos worked with me on Larry 3. Um, but I did, I still was working at home. Um, the artists always worked at Sierra's office. Um, and I was 45 minutes away. Um, so I would go in occasionally. Uh, it was uh, for Larry five. We actually opened an office in Fresno, uh, and, uh, used some of the guys who, uh, didn't want to commute the 45 minutes back and forth, uh, on the world's most dangerous highway. Uh, uh, the road between Fresno and, and uh, Oakhurst was a notorious uh, two-lane blacktop through the mountains. Uh, it was the, um, uh, you know, like an old cow trail or something, a uh, uh, horse, horse buggy. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, it was crooked and narrow and, uh, you know, had mountain drop-offs and, uh, and um uh, there were all, all often terrible accidents. And so anybody who lived in Fresno, when they found out I was going to open an office there, it was like, oh, yeah, no, no, I don't want to go up there. <laughs> Let me work for you, Al. So um, I, I, had, I had good people. and We had a great time. Yeah, you had a bigger team, as, uh, at least when I checked the um, credits. Larry 3 is kind of returned to the roots of the game. Larry goes yes. through women and then meets the one yeah, of yeah. his dreams. <laughs> and that that was actually the moment I meant the the only moment where Larry like broke down when when Patty says the his her former lover's name and then Larry yeah. <laughs> wanders into the forest and what was her former lover's name? Do you I remember? Think it, I think it was Arnold, like probably yeah. from Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Yeah, That's like so like Larry 2 and Larry 3, they were really difficult games because they had some... Um, the puzzles were a bit... The logic was somewhat <laughs> some uh, fuzzy at the times. What are you trying <laughs> to say? <laughs> well, uh, it wouldn't maybe uh, occur to me to, um, let's say... Um, give a flower to the KGB agents. <laughs> in the Larry 2's ending, <laughs> so flower yeah. you didn't even need. Uh, no, you're gonna need later. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I I particularly enjoyed my um, tribute to Blazing Saddles at the end of Larry Three. Uh, I I, I love Blazing Saddles when Mel Brooks uh, uh, broke through the studio wall and and entered the next sound stage. And uh, they were filming a Busby Berkeley musical. <laughs> I, I mean, it was just so totally weird. Uh, I thought, well, what? Why can't I do that in uh, and have people come in on Sierra Studios and, like I did? And so that became the ending of the game. And I, and I liked the fact that you used a magic marker. 
I didn't use magic anywhere in any of the games. You know, all the other games had some kind of magic in them. And I I never did magic or science fiction. I always did, you know, kind of, I mean, weird. weird. Uh, Might be fantastical maybe. elements, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I thought the magic marker was always a, a, a funny name. And, and I don't know if people even know that name. Now everybody uses Sharpie. Uh, but I, well, yeah, in the early magic days, markers. magic marker yeah. was the first thing. It came in a glass bottle and it had a little stem with a wick on it, uh, but a glass bottle. So, yeah, look, Google that one. Uh, look that <laughs> up on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, it, it was, was a, a real, real thing, thing, a magic, magic marker. marker. So, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the, the ending of Larry 3 was like, um, I remember when I played it in somewhere early 90s, I think. It was kind of, um, now that you mention it, the the blazing saddles is exactly <laughs> blazing saddles i didn't think of it back then but i thought it was like very similar to uh space quest 3 it ends exactly the same <laughs> in a way it does really yeah well, like well, roger wilco <laughs> <Space Quest 3. laughs> yeah, yeah. roger wilco brings the two guys from andromeda to sierra to work there so <laughs> kind of <laughs> like sim i it was an accident i i hear now <laughs> yeah, i didn't know that <laughs> okay okay well, well. Anyway, um, then uh, after Larry three, there wasn't a Larry four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I uh, 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 I swore that I wouldn't do a fourth game. Uh, the third game, when I finished it, I, I wanted to wrap it all up, and uh, I mean, I got it to the point where. Larry got a job at Sierra and he was happily married and he had a house on a lake uh, and he began uh, uh, his, he said, I think I'll write a game about a place called lefties. And I actually stole the source code from Larry one and made a graphic of it and put it in the window. So it looked like he was typing and he actually typed the source code for Larry one. And I thought, well, this is, this is a way to bring it all back and uh, 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 tie it up in a big bow. Uh, but uh, what I didn't realize was that the sales team uh, wanted a new product to sell, and uh, they weren't interested in me starting a new series. They said, we want another Larry. Larry sold well, we want more Larry. Um, so uh, uh, after... Um, a, a detour into multiplayer adventure games, um, which Larry Four originally a Larry Four was going to be a multiplayer online uh, adventure uh, with twelve hundred baud modems. Uh, you uh, know, oh, this is, sure. we were at <laughs> least ten years too early. Uh, it, it, you know, uh, uh, but, but Ken had big dreams and uh, he said uh, yeah i want you to do it well we ended up we designed um uh the sierra network uh, constant companion was its first title and then sierra network and it eventually it became uh what, what did aol call it uh it, it became a, a multiplayer online game um but we never could get an adventure game to work uh, it was just too complicated for the uh, time. And I mean, when we started, we didn't know that there was an internet. We didn't know that, it, that, <laughs> yeah, that there, there was, was a way to talk between computers uh, that didn't use modems. So we bought endless stacks of uh, PC chassis and loaded seven modems in each one and then put in the eighth slot a card that connected to the next computer and then put seven modems in there and then connected that to the next. And we had just giant stacks of these things. Uh, and we figured that uh, if this became popular, we would have to hire at least 10 staff members whose job, job it was, was to do nothing but load modems into computers and 
<laughs> all day long. <laughs> times were quite so, different. <laughs> yeah, we had, we had a guy invent time sharing. Uh, we hired a programmer who who sliced up the CPU's time on an AT class computer. Uh, maybe we were up to 386s by then, uh, and um, uh, it was terrible. It was it was just it was, you know later, and we paid for individual phone lines to come into this office. Uh, uh, dozens of phone lines, and, and then we found out. Oh no, you can buy one phone line and, <laughs> and get twenty five <laughs> connections. <laughs> Trial and error. Like, oh. <laughs> we, we, we had, had no, no idea. idea. So, so we, we kind, kind of invented, invented the internet in spite of uh, you know because we didn't know it already existed. So, yeah, I, 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 I read uh, uh, that, that was that was, was supposed to be there before, yeah. and um, after, after a few, few months, months of, of working, working on this thing, I realized. Oh my, oh my God, God this, this is never going, going to uh, ship. ship. This is never <laughs> going to be done. And, and I've, I've got to make some money because, because remember, I wasn't was making advances. I was making, making yeah, uh, living off, off the royalties. And uh, so I've got to have a product that sells. So uh, I went back and I said, oh, I'll make another Larry game. But I had a hell of a time because I, I had ended Larry three in such a way that I had nowhere for him to go. All his problems were solved. There was, you know, you know, there was no conflict. Everything was, was uh, wonderful. And, um, uh, I, I couldn't figure out how to get him out of that and into a situation that, um, was interesting. Um, I went to Sierra to talk about royalties or something one day and ran into a woman uh, in the hallway, I hadn't seen for a while. And she said, Hey, Al, what, how you doing? Oh, fine. Uh, what are you working on now? Larry four. And like a smart ass, I said, no, Larry five, of course I'm working on. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe this is the way out of my problem. You know, maybe I can just kind of ignore Larry four and go to Larry five and uh, uh, nobody, I, I had never heard of anybody doing that before, but I thought, what the hell? There's no rules here. It's not like uh, there's any, you know, defined body of work that says you can't do this. So that became my out was my way of getting away from my problem. And uh, um, I went uh, uh, for Larry five. It turned out to be a, uh, a brilliant way to capture people's minds because um if I had just done four, they would have said, oh, it's the next one in the series. But instead, when you said, oh, now, have you played Larry five? People go, what, what, what wait a minute, I haven't even played Larry <laughs> four yet. And, and, and so instantly you kind of hooked their brain and, uh, and got them interested. And, and, you know, it was, but it was, I'd like to say it was all a brilliant plan that I thought of in advance, but it really was just a smart ass response to somebody's question. Yeah, uh, Larry Five had passionate Patty, the other main character from Larry Larry Three. Also, what was the um, inspiration into that character, the female protagonist? Well, I, wanted I wanted somebody who was opposite of Larry, who was uh, you know different. I had I was uh, tired of always having the anti-hero uh, hero, and um, and I thought it would be do, good to do somebody opposite. Uh, the problem then I had that I, that created for me was how do I make these two opposites attract because they're so different. I mean, you know, she was everything he wasn't and vice versa. Uh, uh, and I also wanted to do something that hadn't been done in games before, which was have a female protagonist and have the uh, character switch halfway through the game. Um, and you played the, you know, the first half of the game as Larry, and then suddenly Larry walks off screen, and and what the hell? The, uh, where, where's where's my uh, character that I've been playing for all for uh, uh, all these games? So that was the fun part of uh, Larry Three. So, uh, but in in five, I wanted to. Uh, uh, mix things up. And we also wanted to make it simpler. Um, we had a feeling that a lot of people couldn't finish our games, that the puzzles were too obscure or difficult or whatever. And we, uh, that we should make alternative solutions to the games, uh, puzzles. 
And so we uh, spent a lot of time and effort making multiple solutions to puzzles, but in Larry Five, which took a lot more work on our part and a lot more money on Ken's part. Uh, but it turned out that people playing the game played it through once and whatever path they found, uh, they assumed that that was the only path and no one ever went back and finished it. I mean, I think you could finish that game with 350 or 400 points out of a thousand. And, um, uh, boy, rarely did, I think until, until. internet and walkthroughs, uh, did anybody finish with a thousand points? Yeah, there were Go like ahead. I think four thousand points in Larry three. Four thousand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's quite a lot, <laughs> quite a lot of small yeah. trivia points. How, how do you think like uh, Patty was the protagonist, the other protagonist in two games, and uh, how do you think like past few years the Me Too movement and such? Uh, how, how does how do you think Larry games at that time when viewed from <laughs> this angle how how do you how do they work in your view how do you think poorly <laughs> <laughs> well I mean I like to think I invented the me too movement because <laughs> yeah <laughs> Larry wasn't uh, the, but, yeah but, he but wasn't seriously, the I mean, Larry was a game of its time and uh uh, yeah. How can I say it? When we redid Larry One in 1991, it, it was only three or four years old, and so we didn't change much about it. We added to it. We made it better, made better graphics, better music, and and a lot of things. But um, 16 years later, I don't know, some a number of years later, we redid Larry one and called it Leisure Suit Larry Reloaded. Uh, and at that time, we, we had discussions about whether we should bring him up to date and have him do. And we all agreed that uh, if we brought him up to date, he'd be a terrible person. You know, it, it, that he was a creature of his time and period and, and surroundings. And, that, and so we purposely made the um, uh, game set in the late 80s. Uh, and we made references to current events at that time, and and we did our best to make it not of the current time. Because, like you said, I mean, it, it's it's not the right game for that point. And I, I think if you notice the two games that were done immediately after I left Sierra, uh, that were uh, pretty. <laughs> let's see, how can I say this? Were, were not well received. Is that the way to say it? Um, yeah, that's uh, one way to say it. Magna Cum Laude wasn't a bad game. It had a lot of funny scenes in it. It was written by some guys who were really funny, and uh, um, uh, but it was just not very well programmed, and and a lot of the text responses were terrible. But uh, uh, then the other game, Box Office Bust, was one of the worst games of the year. Uh, many websites awarded it the worst game, and... Um, in fact, I have a page on my humor site uh, called uh, um, "How People How People Like Box Office Bust" <laughs> because there were so many terrible quotations. It's just fun to read uh, how insulting reviewers were about that game. So yeah. those two games were kind of off, you know, later and off kilter. Uh, then the the um, the guys, a crazy bunch that's doing the um, uh, wet, wet dreams, dreams don't, don't dry, dry. Or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. Uh, that uh, it's hard to say. That that uh, they did a much uh, better. I thought took a much better approach to the games and uh, were much more successful. Their approach was: um, he's a guy from the '80s who's awakened in the current times and is out of touch. Uh, so I mean, you know, the joke was Larry was ten years out of date. <laughs> when I wrote it, uh, now he's forty years out of date. <laughs> so I, I, you know, that's a that's a pretty big stretch. <laughs> yeah, it's a stretch, but uh, in in a he's way, be Rip Van Winkle, Winkle soon. soon. Uh, yeah, and uh, Larry had some very. <laughs> uh, you, you made educational games before Larry, and um, in a way, I think you never stopped because 
Um, <laughs> la- la- yeah, because Larry came came out at at the uh, height of the a- HIV epidemic, I think. Oh yeah. And Larry used a condom, <laughs> and <laughs> and the game told that if you don't do it. You might die. Oh, in Larry, you are, of course, died. You, of course. Uh, you had a radioactive crotch. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually have um, a memory. I was maybe about seven or eight years old, and uh, I was at home, and my <clears throat> mom asked me, like, what have I been doing today? And I told her that I was playing video games or computer games, and she asked w- what game, game and... I told that there was this game called uh, Larry, <laughs> and Mom asked, "What what do you do in that game?" And then I told her, <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> "Exactly." I don't think I used hell or damn even. Yeah, uh, I I was very uh, conscious of that because um, my wife and I had two children, and at that time one was four and the other was ten or eleven. Uh, and we never used profanity around the house. I mean, we, we did our best to make sure they never heard those words from us. And, and so I thought, well, I'm not going to put them in a game either. So, yep. Yeah, Larry was always... Quaint. Yeah, he, quaint. Larry had a worse reputation than he actually <laughs> actually yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, after Larry 5, there was Larry 6 and Larry 7, which were kind of like a reboot of of the whole franchise again. <laughs> Larry Six, no more Patty, and <laughs> Larry is back to doing what he does. <laughs> yeah. And then, then the whole thing ended, like you said, the uh, Sierra. Sierra was taken over and run down by giant corporations. Yeah, it, was it was a sad time. Uh, you know, Sierra started on Ken and Roberta's k- kitchen table. Um, it, it, it was a mom and pop operation. Uh, they they did the games themselves. They put them in baggies. They sold them, and um, people mailed checks to their home to buy the games. I mean, that's how small the industry was at that time. And it grew from that to uh, at the time it was taken over, it was worth over a billion dollars um, uh, in, in market capitalization. So. It was sad to see within a period of five years, the company go from a 28% market share. Um, in other words, 28 cents out of every dollar spent on home software was spent at Sierra. <laughs> that's uh, that's insane. From that, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, and not just games. Uh, games were a big part of it, obviously. But, but, um, but Sierra had uh, landscape designers software and home decorating software, you know, room remodeling and or home remodeling software. Um, and they had uh, educational titles. My daughter learned to drive on a wonderful program um, that that uh, I thought should be universal. Uh, and uh, it was called Driver Driver Ed. And the, the lead character was named Ed. <laughs> and he Cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great because she learned that you had to adjust your mirrors before you could start and, and that you had to uh, put on the brakes and that's a complete stop and all these things that she, she and she loved playing the game before she was able to actually get behind the wheel of a real car. And the first time I put her behind the wheel, she just drove. It was wonderful. So. <laughs> And with yeah, the, I mean, and, and, so, yeah. and there were a lot of games like that at at Sierra. A lot of products that uh, were incredibly successful. Um, people don't remember impressions. Of the uh, software uh, was was huge. We had a huge role playing uh, RPG segment and um, uh, flight simulator. They did uh, um, uh, Red Baron. Uh, not only Red, Red Baron, Baron, but also, also helicopter, helicopter pilot yeah. and. Uh, but I mean, just a lot of uh, uh, of titles that, um, yeah. And within five years, uh, the company was down to twelve employees, and they moved them to Los Angeles and turned off the lights and locked the doors. It was, it was terrible. terrible. 
Yeah, it was a great loss, and uh, the whole industry changed. Lucas Arts started making only Star Wars games, and here what went down, and adventure games went down. Just a few quick questions to you, Allo, before I let you there go are no on with your day. <laughs> uh, do you play games today? No, no. you don't play. Okay. No, no. I play, <laughs> I play backgammon. backgammon. Oh, well, backgammon. Yeah. That's a not, game. Not even but... Candy Crush. <laughs> Uh, I, I tried, tried Candy <laughs> Crush for a while, but <laughs> I grew bored. But, but back in, uh, I've, I've always, always played, played, and um, I still enjoy playing it. But, you know, that's, that's my, my, it's the that's my uh, stand in line at the post office game. Okay. Um, do you still keep in touch with uh, people at Sierra, like Ken Williams and other? I uh, um, keep in touch with Ken and Roberta. Uh, we're quite close, and uh, they have a home here in Seattle and uh, they just got their new boat uh, and they promised that uh, we're going to get a ride this summer. We're going to go out someplace on the, on their yacht. Uh, uh, but uh, um, we play golf together. Uh, uh, the other guys, not so much. No. Okay. We were driven to the bar. As it happens, it, it's a long time. <laughs> 30, 37 years ish. Okay. Yeah. And the final question, from another friend of mine who I told I was going to talk to you. Who is your favorite Larry girl? <laughs> oh, Larry girl? Um, oh, I guess Patty. Yeah, <laughs> Patty's got to be. Because, I mean, like she's a jazz piano player. You know what? That's, that's, <laughs> that's the best for me. <laughs> okay. Uh Hello, thank you very much for... Uh, oh, wait a second. You've got to yeah. plug my product. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was g coming to that. Well, you, you, have a, you have a web page. Tell us about I it. I do. I have, I have a, a little website, website that uh, I created years ago, and uh, uh, people, people can email me through that web page. Uh, they can sign up for my daily joke email, uh, which I've sent out for the past 21 years. Uh, 22, 22 years now. Uh, every weekday morning, I send out two jokes, one of which is clean. And uh, uh, that, that's called Cyber Joke. Oh, wait. It's Cyber Joke 3000. 3000. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and follow me on eBay. Not on Instagram or uh, Facebook or that's. Oh, I'm on Twitter if you want to get jokes on Twitter. I send out. I send out jokes, but but uh, on eBay, I've been cleaning out my attic and uh, uh, selling off the uh, few remaining copies of my games that uh, that I have left. So uh, I, I uh, my children aren't that interested in them. It's just me, you know. <laughs> so uh, what I found is that it. other people have a higher opinion of me than they do. So <laughs> I think that's so, how anyway. it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been actually uh, reading the jokes. One, I, I spent uh, quite a lot of time reading them. They were. Oh, good. I laughed. You could make a game out of those jokes alone. I think. <laughs> well, but good. anyway, Al, thank you very much for uh, having fine. this talk. I I just want to tell you that um, even some people might think that Larry was an innovation and uh, and a breakthrough in the in the adventure game scene and of course it was but i think the biggest effect you had it was training um <clears throat> a generation of people to speak and write in english <laughs> language <laughs> since well it certainly, it certainly worked, worked with you, you. Your english <laughs> is better than thanks mine. <laughs> thanks uh, um police quest one was the first game i played programmed oh. by you i think and yeah. I typed open door, how my dad told me to do it, and it went on from that. Hey, Al, thank you very much, and I hope you have a nice summer and you stay healthy and say hello thank to you. Ken. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye -bye. thanks. Bye-bye.